Hi, I'm Tara Kelly, instructor of English at the University of North Florida, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about G. Uh, one of the ways that I think about summarizing a text is first to identify what the key terms, key ideas are in the text. And so I use note cards. I'm going to share those note cards with you throughout this. So here I wrote, James Paul G is not just about the definition of the elements of discourse. And I asked myself, so what is it about if it's not just the elements of discourse? What, the very first key term that I think about is discourse. So G says that discourse has two different things. The first being syntax and language. And he says that syntax, the structure of a sentence, the language that we're using, uh, looking at the actual words that are being said and how they're being said is one thing that is very important. He also says that linguists sometimes look at pragmatics, uh, which he says can also be associated with discourse, which is language and use. And that is looking at the context of language, the context in which language is being used. He says these are the two main ways that linguists talk about discourse in um, the little d sense that he is talking about. When G talks about discourse, he says that it's both. And so it's important to identify that in the text, that he says these are two ways to think about discourse and that he is going to be defining discourse or starting his discussion of discourse with both. Then he goes on to talk about identity and says that something that's being left out of the conversation is identity. He says that, and he quotes, identity is to say something, do something, and are something. That when we speak, we say, do, and are something. And that we design for a reason and with a purpose. That we use language in a way that designs something. And then um, he says that there are nine things that are associated with identity in some way and that um, it's important to think about when an author says here are nine things or numbers something then those things become really important and when we are summarizing a text we should probably search for how we can summarize those nine things or the numbered items into our summary because the author has identified them as important and has shown that importance through the act of numbering. So G does number some things and I put them on cards more in categories than in numbers because I wanted to think about them as categories. And the first four I wrote down like this. Two of them talk about speakers and writers, and he says that speakers and writers design what they're saying in order, according to the recipient, who they are talking to, who's going to receive the message, and then the position uh, that they want to take to that audience. So he's saying that the audience becomes important in how speakers and writers design. And he also says that listeners and readers will situate themselves within the meaning of the context, that in the context of this reading, the listener and reader situate themselves in the conversation in some way. They bring identity in some way to this conversation and that they respond based on their situated meaning, based on the meanings that they're already bringing to the text. And that we cannot think about a reader or a listener without all of the context and meaning and everything that they're bringing to the text. And then he goes on to discuss identity further and says that there are two levels of identity. And I've written them out like this. One is social identity. And he says that we can look at that on a spectrum of intimate to stranger. The way that we present our identity is going to be very different if we know that person really well or if we don't know the person at all. And that we can think about groupings of social significance. And when he talks about grouping, groupings of social significance, he says the discourse communities that we belong to. When we, so for example, I am a baby wearer, and so I belong to a community of baby wearers. This is a group of social significance to me, other people who wear their babies. 
Uh, I also put myself in a, in a social significance of other instructors of English, that I can group those people together. And those groupings don't need to be necessarily formal. They can be informal groups, but that those groupings, the way that we might identify ourselves, instructor of English, baby wearer, that those groupings are meaningful. And he gives many of examples of them. And so he says, those are our two levels of identity would be how close we are to others and then the, the communities that we put ourselves into. And then moving from that, he says that we use language either in a very specialist sort of ways that we might have language that only others within a specific discourse community or others that have similar identity would understand. And then we have this vernacular social language and that identity and social distance affects the communication and discourse. It affects the language that we choose to use. And he says that it's important to realize that there are these different types of social languages. So that actually encompasses the first eight bullet points that he has. And all of these key terms would be key terms so far that would be really important. So the key terms are identity, speakers and writers, listeners and readers, this uh, idea of design and situated meaning. Again, looking at identity, we have social distance, social significance, and then we have social languages. If you notice the word social comes up over and over in the way that G discusses discourse. And he says that all of these elements come together to what he says is big D discourse. And in big D discourse, we start to examine the interactions of these things, and we start to think of these communities as being something more than just a grouping of people, or language is more than just the words that are chosen. He says that there, there are more latent meanings behind how we use language within certain contexts, and he calls that big D discourse. So he makes this distinction between this little d discourse and big D discourse and says that that distinction is extremely key to how he says that we should analyze discourse if we are a researcher analyzing discourse. He also has a section on what about culture and talks about the difference uh, between culture. And if I were somebody who was summarizing, this would be the one section that I might leave out from my, in, from my short summary because here he's making a distinction about what discourse is not versus saying what it is. And in a summary to somebody, I might just be focusing on G's main idea and what he says discourse is and the reasons why we should analyze it. So that would be his one section on um, culture. Going back to this idea that Big D discourse is examining interactions, G brings up webs of association. And he says that these different discourse communities can intersect and that it's important to see that we aren't bringing a single identity, but that we bring multiple identities to a situation, and that we should look at how those different identities interact with one another um, in the discourses that we have. So he calls it, he says that one of the terms is webs of association. He also presents other terms that can be used, and it's important to at least understand um, that these discourse communities interact. They intersect and that multiple uh, identities come to a specific situation. And this all comes down to his final um, argument, which is that big D, little d discourse analysis, he presents it as this. This is how he notates it. This is the language that he uses in his text. And he says that we can have this kind of discourse analysis and use it as a tool for studying social life. That's on page 107. And that his main argument is that how we produce and reproduce identities uh, is really important to study and that this is an, he says that we should analyze in this way and that if we are going to do discourse analysis, that the only way that we can do it successfully is to look at all of these elements that he presents. So his argument is not, going back to the very beginning, G's argument is not just that there are many elements to this definition of discourse. He is saying that we must look at and examine all of these elements if we are to analyze what discourse is and what it means 
to uh, be in an understanding, developing an understanding of somebody's identity. 